much, Lindsay Zarniak. Established in 1959, perfected in each and every year since. Welcome to Daytona International Speedway and the start of the 2019 racing season. Right now, 35 ARCA drivers are fighting those nervous pre-race jitters, hoping the steps they've taken to get here gets them closer to the dream of a Daytona win. Cars and stars of the ARCA series get set for the green, and we are time we ask that you please rise and remove your hats as the Spruce Creek High School Army Junior ROTC Color Guard presents our nation's colors. Please remain standing as Greg Ellis, Assistant Vice President of Mission and Ministry at Advent Health, offers our invocation. Our gracious Heavenly Father, we thank you for the freedom you have given us to gather together here today to enjoy this wonderful racing event. We ask for your protection and blessing to be with each participant this afternoon and keep us always in your care and safekeeping as we walk with you day by day. In your holy name we pray. Amen. Here to perform our national anthem from Daytona Beach, Florida, please welcome Michelle Lexa. Oh, say can you see by the dawn's early light what so proudly we hailed at the twilight's last gleaming whose broad stripes and bright stars through the perilous fire Let's hear it one more time for Michelle Lexa and her performance of our national anthem. Two days of practice and qualifying are in the books. And with that, it's time to buckle up when we return the command to fire as we continue to run down the dream for one Daytona driver. Time to go racing in 2018. It begins at Daytona International Speedway with the ARCA Racing Series. They are lined up, ready to go. The first stock car race of 2018. Here we go. Big crash, spinning, 
turning. Well, there we go. Direct. Piling into the outside wall. Five to go. Gregson giving the push to Creed on the bottom side. Ernie making it a three-car push on the outside. Two and a half miles to go in the season opener in Daytona. And they're wrecking. Holt is going around and upside down. A big one. Big one. One to go in Daytona. Side by side. Creed on the bottom side. Ernie is going around. Hard into the wall. One more time to decide the season opener. And it's a great jump for Michael Silk. Michael Silk is going to win it. will happen in the 56 chapter we are about to find out arca turns 67 and it does so with dylan welch and kim coons patrolling the pits here at the lucas oil 200 driven by general tire and high above daytona international speedway i am dave reef alongside of a man in his 52nd consecutive speed weeks phil parsons glad to be hanging out with you today phil let's start by talking about that new title right sponsor it was a uh, a part-time sponsor year to year, but now Menards and John Menards has come on full-time. What does the Arca Menard series mean to the racers? I think it means a lot. This race, this series has been without an entitlement sponsor for over 10 years now. But for John Menard to step up with the Menards brand and say, hey, I want to be the entitlement sponsor, the title sponsor for the series, means so much to these guys. And it's going to mean some more money to these guys year in in the point fund. That, of course, comes fresh off the announcement of NASCAR taking over. That happened January 1st this year. Those additional changes to come in 20 we'll talk more about that in a little bit but let's talk about the race and this is a guy that's been there done it raced it owned it crashed it done it all no better man to turn to as we turn to dark skies race cars on the grid and strategy today which features again in the arca category veterans and youngsters you know these, you think these drivers are amped up because they've been waiting all winter to get in these cars well now we have some threatening skies what was an 80 lap race could become a 40 lap race we have 13 drivers making their first ever start here at daytona including two 18 year olds on the front row but you don't have to think about just the young drivers you go all the way back to row number 12 we've got some experience bobby gerhardt has won this race eight times in that five lucas oil car right there he's going to be a threat today as well toss in two women leilante munter and natalie Decker, and we're going to have some fun today as we send it down for the command to start pit side. And now for the most famous words in motorsports, please welcome your Grand Marshal, Director of Marketing for General Tire, Travis Ruffler. Drivers, start your engines. What a great sound as 35 ARCA cars powered by Ilmore 396 engines roared to life and soon they will roll off the pit grid. The next thing that they will see will be the green flag when we come back to the Lucas Oil 200 driven by General Tire. Back at Daytona as the field begins to take shape for the 56th running of the Lucas Oil 200 driven by General Tire. A field that will be paced today by an 18-year-old that came onto the Arkham Menard Series scene last year big time, picking up a win first in Salem. Yeah, he wasn't old enough to run all the races, so he just ran the races that he could, and what a great job he did. He wins on the dirt in Springfield and then finishes it up in October and gets that big win at O'Reilly Raceway Park. And today he will bring the car that won last year, Michael Self's machine, to the green flag by earning the pole in group qualifying. Six groups that went out together and ultimately who made the fastest lap that gets the general tire pull award he did it to perfection drafting hanging back making the move yeah he's about 10 car lengths back when they got to the start finish line and then he was right on their bumper when they came back around a great job by christian eckes time now for the lucas oil starting field is christian eckes and thad moff at the grandson of the king richard petty start row number one of the combined 36 years how about Earth. that great qualifying effort by leilani munter back in row number two in what could be her final race Defending champ starts outside row number three. Last year's pole sitter, Natalie Decker, starts inside of row four. Connor Hall, another one of those young drivers making his first start here at Daytona in row five. And how about the story of the 28, Brandon McReynolds? Yeah, let's see if we can chat with Brandon McReynolds here. He's going to start from the sixth row. Hey, Brandon McReynolds, Bill Parsons up in the Fox booth. You got a copy? Yeah, I got you. Great job qualifying. You're in a very, very fast car. That's the car that Sheldon Creed ran last year and had a shot to win but man brandon that car looks good what kind of memories does that bring back for you yeah it's pretty cool i mean just an honor for me and my family and the house and family to be able to run the same scheme just very appreciative of u.s work coast 
Thompson. Or an Eagle Resort and Casino coming on board so we can have a little fun. And just can't say my person, the KPR development guys, enough for giving me a shot. They could have put anybody in the thing and they're going to let me have a little fun. So we'll see what we can do. All right, buddy, give her a good ride. If you think that car looks like Davy Allison's, you'd be right. We'll have that story throughout our 200-miler today. But right now, it's time to check in with our onboard cameras. We've got five of them, including Joe Graff and the EatSleepRace.com onboard camera. Scheduled to start 20th, but had some rear-end issues yesterday. He'll go to the back of the field. That'll be an interesting view. We're also going to ride along with this Monster Energy Toyota for Riley Herbst. That is the Orca Coolers on board. He will be starting from the 17th spot, and he will share this ride with Joe Gribbs' grandson, Ty, this season in the Arkham Menard Series. Family connections all throughout the grid. Now we're checking in with Gus Dean, the general tire on board. He starts 16th today. Gus looking to make a big-time move. Also going to ride along with the 27 of Travis Brayton. Travis is making his third start here. Matrix Care comes on board in a bigger way this year. They're awfully excited to have him, and he will be starting from the eighth spot. Brayton oh so close to winning this event last year, and that fifth and final one belongs to the What the Health driver. What the Health on board, the 55 of Leilani Munter. What a great story she's been, a great female that is very eco-friendly, environmental friendly, loves raising money for her efforts, and she says she is done at the end of this race today. Let's take a look at some of our bounty rookie spotlights. First, by looking back at drivers that have been rookies of the year, including Riley Herbst, who's in the field today. How about the guy at the bottom of the list? Benny you know, Parsons, you, my you brother Benny. Yeah, I do. 1965. And I was here for that ARCA race in 1965. If I do my math right, yes, you would be exactly here for <laughs> sure. And then, of course, when you start looking toward 2019, guys that we are going to keep our eyes on, they include Tommy Vi, Brendan Queen, Paul Williams, and Scott Melton, who's had a rough weekend so far. But Christian Eckes on the pole has got to be the prohibitive favorite based on this so far. But we'll see how everything plays out through 200 laps today. As I mentioned, Dylan Welch, Kim Coons, our patrol in the pits. Let's check in with Dylan out to see what he's drummed up. Hey, Dave, thanks. So there's a lot of great stories in this Arc Art series, one of which is Thad Moffat, who rolls off from outside the front row this afternoon. Not only is he making his super speedway debut, he's returning the Petty family name to the high banks of Daytona for the first time in 11 years. As King Richard's grandson, he described getting to race here as a rite of passage as a petty family member. The entire family is here today. What a treat it would be for them to watch Thad Moffat put that petty blue back in victory lane at Daytona. Kim? Thanks, Dylan. Well, from a driver making his first start at Daytona to a driver making her final start, Leilani Munter has said this will be her final race. She's hanging up her fire suit after a career that spanned 18 years, starting in grassroots racing with stints in the Indy Light Series and the Arkham Menard Series. But she says she's at peace with the decision. Earlier in the day in the garage, fans lined up to bid her farewell. The show of support brought her to tears. They were bittersweet tears. She said it's been an incredible journey, and she cannot think of a better place to make her final start than the World Center of Racing. Leilani topped the speed charts over a two-day test here back in January, and she'll start third today for Venturini Motorsports. 18 consecutive days of posting memories from her 18 years. By the way, also the sister-in-law of Bob Weir, one of the original founders of the Grateful Dead. Some fancy people there involved with Leilani. Let's take a look at the forecast right now, which says cloudy, but it has said that all day. We've had a few sprinkles at the Speedway. Yeah, I think we're going to be okay. Uh, even that earlier sprinkles we had wasn't even on the radar. So you see the humidity, 83%. Pretty windy to have a typical headwind down the backstretch for these drivers to contend with. It's been warm throughout the entire weekend. Now look at the temperatures down at 61. The radar, everything skirting just south so far of Orlando. We'll pay attention to what develops out there over the water, though. But that's going to be part of the strategy we are talking about today. How long will we go? The race needs to go 40 laps for sure. Yeah, these drivers can go about 50 to 55 laps on fuel. So normally they would say, okay, once we run 25, 30 laps, we get in our window, then we're going to stop it. Then we know we're good to the end. But because of the threatening weather, they may say, okay, we're just going to run to the first 40 laps, make sure we can get to halfway in case we do get some weather. Cars making their way off of turn number four begin to enter the tri-oval and in a moment, the pace car will pull in and we will be set for 200 miles of racing here with the Arca season kicking off another great year, their 67th season behind the leadership of Ron Drager. Christian Eckes drives a Toyota. 
Thad Moffitt drives a Chevrolet. Combined 36 years. But it is Eckes that paces the field. The green flag is out, and we are racing in the Art Menard Series at the Lucas Oil 200. Great job by Thad Moffitt to get in between the two teammates, Eckes and Leilani. And it is Eckes that leads the freight train into turn number one. He will protect the yellow line. Talk to any racer. They say, yep, make them go around you if you can. We talk about the teammates, Leilani and Moonter, Christian Eckes. There's also two other teammates from Vineyard in Motorsports. Harrison Burton and Michael Self also lined up right behind Leilani. Eight, nine cars. It's a single freight train on the bottom right now. The draft's so very important. But look at the outside line now begin to make some momentum. That's Tyler Dipple, the 52 car for Kenny Schrader, trying to make something happen on the outside. He has some help out there, too. And across the stripe for lap number one, Christian Eckes will lead it. You talk to some of the team owners. They say they're going to lay back, see how things play out with this weather. You talk to some of the higher funded teams, the teams with big time power and also teammates. If they can get hooked up, they want to go as hard and as fast as they can. If I'm 18 years old, I want to be leading this race, just like Christian Eka says. Do they know any other way? I don't think so. There's Natalie Decker right there, the 54. Remember, she was our pole sitter last year, had a top five finish in this race, in a good spot right now. There's Michael Self. It's the green and white number with the dinosaur on the hood. He was number 15 last year. That's the number that Christian Eckes has this year. Michael's in the number 25. Car looks much the same as it did last year, just a different number. Tyler Dipple is doing a pretty good job leading that outside line. You see how close he gets to the cars on the inside to try to side draft to kind of stall their momentum a little bit and propel that outside line. Gus Dean doing a good job as well. That black 32 right behind Tyler. Cars that feature the five-star composite body gone away from the steel body cars from a couple of years ago. There's a little bump draft. A little bump draft by Willie Mullins. Willie tries to get to the oh, inside. On. We got oh, a car going. Goes. Michael Self. Problems for the defending champion. Caution is out. So I believe Mullins also off of the pace. We Cars see... that were running sixth and eighth. Didn't mean to interrupt, Phil. That's all right. We see these guys bump drafting, trying to get an advantage. They were trying to keep that outside line, um, that inside line in the momentum. But sometimes that bump drafting goes bad. This looks like that might have been one of this, this situation. Michael Self looking for that opportunity to defend that championship came in with high hopes as he had a race car that could certainly get the job done. But now he's given Shannon Rush his entire crew something to think about. Can they get that car pieced back together and will they have enough time to make a move now from the back of the pack? A lot of damage. Let's see what happens. We see we saw Willie, a little bit of bump drafting and he got to 25 of Self. Oh my! Out of shape and then when Michael came back down to the inside, Willie had already the momentum pushed his nose up into there and got into him, and around he went. There's certainly no intent there, but that's where the... See the little bit of a gap in front of the 25? Willie was trying to close that gap up by pushing pushing Michael Self. It didn't work out. All four tires up off the ground. Great job by these five-star bodies with the roof flaps deploying to keep that car on the ground. That has got to be an unsettling feeling. Being turned, going backwards, having all four wheels. One more look at it. See, Michael's right against the double ye yellow line, but this second or third bump is going to get him out of shape. He's going to slide up, and that's all it takes. Very fortunate that car stayed on the ground, but a lot of damage to that Sinclair car. Let's take a look from the 18 car, Riley Erbst. He's right behind the 54, Natalie Decker. Just barely backed out of the throttle there. Three laps of 80 are in the books, and the defending champion, Michael Self of the Sinclair 25. He's got problems with his Toyota after getting together with the three car of Willie Mullins. Back to Daytona in the Lucas Oil 200, driven by General Tire in a moment. Brought out by Willie Mullins and Michael Self. We check in now down pit side with Dylan. 
Well, and Dave, they've got uh, some pretty serious cosmetic damage. All of the low-hanging bodywork on that Michael Self machine took the brunt of the impact when he slid through the grass. It folded the front of the splitter all the way under the car. They've cut that off. It ripped the left front splitter completely off. That's gone. They were concerned about the right front bodywork being shoved back into the right front tire. They cut a brace off of that, hucked that over the wall, said that solved the vibration that Michael had. They're bringing him back down pit road just to monitor it and double check things. It folded the left front, the left side side skirt underneath the body as well. That's kind of the area of focus right now, that left front and the side skirt behind the left front as they continue to monitor just the, uh, the entire splitter area on this Michael Self machine. So crew chief Shannon Rush just told them they're going to have to manage now and get what they can with that damage. Kim? Graf Jr. just came in. They were being extra careful because remember earlier in the weekend they had to replace the entire drive line. That's why despite qualifying 20th he had to start from the rear of the field. So they were being extra careful. He came down just now, cut off the engine. They had a crew member crawling in on the right side window to check up under the windshield as well as in the dash area. Right now the team just making sure everything is A-OK -okay for Joe Graf Jr. And then they took the time to top off as well as clean the grill when he made that stop. Thank you very much, Kim. One to go now on the field as Michael Self is pushing their car back now to the garage area. Michael, one of those racers going full-time. All 20 races this year said he wanted to defend that championship from last year, winning this race as respectfully as he could while keeping points in mind. That's a blow. Yeah, for, for, on both instances, for sure. But uh, tough break. They'll rebound, and they'll be strong the next race the Arca Racing Series goes to in Pensacola, Florida. Well, as I mentioned, it is a 20-race schedule. It features eight races right here on the Fox Family of Broadcast. 2019 schedule coming at you here right now that features lots of super speedway racing, some short track racing, even a couple of trips driving in the dirt. Yeah, tremendously diverse schedule here for the ARCA Racing Series, the ARCA Menard Series. It's, it's going to be nice to get used to yes, saying that, is. but see uh, what, a, what a variety. Fairground Speedway in Nashville, so much history at that racetrack. They'll go in May. We'll be back on the FS1 airwaves here with the third race of the ARCA season. Once we complete action here in Daytona, we race out in Talladega at another one, the Super Speedways. Well, the rain continuing to hold off as we get ready to go green once again. It's Eckes and Moffitt continuing to pace this field. The 18-year-olds doing a very good job. Leilani continuing to hold her position as it is now Harrison Burton outside of the fourth row. Yeah, we're going to split up these teammates a little bit here. Some of them are going to be on the inside, some of them on the outside. Tyler Dipple did a great job with that outside line. Now he's going to line up on the inside of the third row in the white and red number 52 car for Kenny Schrader. Cody Robal, that's the black and green car behind that white and red car. He does a good job, always runs fast, running a limited schedule here in the Arkham Menard series. Pace car is off, and we wait for the sign. But the green flag is out. And it is displayed by Denise Engel, the starter for the fourth year here. Let's watch everybody try to get down to the inside. You see Harrison Burton, the white and red car, on the outside, leaving that outside line. Gus Dean, the 32, black and red car, right behind him. There's Natalie Decker in the white, black and red, number 54, behind Gus. 52 car, that's the white and red machine running in the fifth spot there. Tyler Dipple doing a good job of not allowing anyone on that outside line to sneak in. A little wiggling there going on. Yes, Leilani Munter, the 55 car for Venerini Motorsports. One of the four teammates now down to three, two other teammates with Michael Self's problems. See Riley Herbst, the monster, black monster car moving up on the rear bumper of the 54 of Natalie Decker. Herb's being scored in the ninth position now as Harrison Burton has moved up past the scoring and timing line into the second spot. But now Moffitt's back on the inside, edging back into that position. That's the black and blue machine, the grandson of the king, Richard Petty. Of course, Lee Petty winning the first ever NASCAR race right here at Daytona, and King Richard, a seven-time 500 champion. How about Uncle Kyle? This, the ARCA race 40 years ago, uh, 40 years ago was the very first race Kyle ever ran in anything, and he went to victory lane. It's amazing. I talked to him about perhaps the pressure there. How about Harrison Burton jumping to the lead for a moment? 
on the outside with a good push from Gus Dean. Can he hold on to it? We'll talk more about pressure and Thad Moffitt in a moment. By the narrowest of margins, Eckes leads lap. Number eight. The bird now with a push on the outside. Well, these cars so evenly matched here. Ever since they repaid this racetrack a few years ago, that really put a premium on, on, on the bodies and the engines in these cars. And all but one of these cars has the exact same engine, the ARCA 396 built by Elmore. There's one legacy engine, they call it, an old-style engine, but 34 of the 35 starters had the ARCA 396 in it. Con Nicolopoulos with the legacy engine. Top 24 racers pack racing right now. From Eckes on back to Williamson in the 36, 1.6 seconds. Those cars are going pretty quick as they make their way past the start finish line once again. And guys, just taking a look at Gus Dean there. He started 16th and he's battling for that second spot leading the outside lane. Just talking to his crew chief, Jamie Jones, a little bit earlier this afternoon. They wanted to get out of the middle of the pack. They weren't real urgent to do so, though. They just wanted to be precise and aggressive with their moves, but they didn't want to force the issue. They wanted to get up towards the front, though, so that they could play offense today, not be on defense the entire afternoon. That strategy's worked so far. He's been on the charge in the early going. Gus Dean in that black 32 car, he says he's got a lot of races to get done here at Daytona. Going to go Gander Outdoor Truck Series racing, head up to New Smyrna, do some racing there. All of that happening here. It's Speed Weeks. Florida's the place to be in February. Gus Dean's a former winner at Talladega. Race very much like this. Sister racetrack to Daytona, so he knows how to get it done on a super speedway. Harrison Burton now is your race leader as Akis has been shuffled back to number three spot. This is going to happen all afternoon. Who gets the draft? Who gets the edge? Who can take the stripe? Who can block their per closest pursuer? I've really been impressed on how well the outside line can form up and keep with these guys. That allowed Harrison Burton to get the lead. The outside line pushed him up in front of Christian Nickus, and then he pulled over down in front of him, got to the inside line. But this outside line is staying right with him. Harrison Burton, we didn't talk about him. He said the front row had 18-year-olds on it. Well, Harrison Burton. Guess Jeff what? Burton's son, 18-year-old kid, <laughs> doing a great job. He says he's doing learning for the truck series as well. So past the start-finish line, we are 12 laps in of 80. As we get a look at the general tire leaderboard, it's Burton, Eckes, Dean, Moffat, and Decker. As we'll be back to the Lucas Oil 200, driven by General Tire from Daytona in just a moment. Side-by-side -side slugfest. It is the Lucas Oil 200, driven by General Tire. The ARCA season opener. As Harrison Burton and Gus D continue to wage war side-by-side. -side. Look at the 54 coming as we check in with Kim. Natalie Decker doing a great job handling that Toyota out there today. Remember, she made the move this season to GGR Crosley. Qualified that Toyota in the seventh position. Right now, her spotter, veteran spotter in the Monster G NASCAR Cup Series, Kevin Hamlin, is just guiding her through these laps, telling her the areas of the track where she's best at building the run right now. She's getting the biggest run off corner three. Also reminding her to use the side drive, coaching her along. Natalie saying right now, the car feeling really good. Dylan Welch is back in the garage. And Kim Shannon Rush is calling the shots back here on the Michael Self car, trying to orchestrate the repairs on this Sinclair Toyota. They've got some suspension damage on the right front when the car slipped through the grass and ripped off that front valence. It did do some serious damage to the underbody, to the suspension part of the race car. So that's the biggest concern right now. They put the side skirts back on the left front. The valence is probably junk. They may be out to lunch there, but they're trying to get the suspension patched back up to send Michael back out and at least log some laps. Remember, he is running running for a championship this year. That's different than the situations he's been in the past. So they want to get him back out there just to try and accumulate as many points as he can. Back on the track, Gus Steen says he's going for broke. And from sixth, he's your race leader now, starting to open it up a little bit with the help of Harrison Burton on the inside line. Yeah, what a great way to start speed weeks for Gus Dean, as you mentioned, going to run full time in the truck series. So he'll be back next week for the Gander Outdoors truck series race. Behind Harrison Burton's Eckes, as you get a look now at Natalie Decker. Running side by side with front row starter, Bad Moffitt. 
Yeah, the 18 of Riley Herbst, the, eight, the black monster car, gonna try to get up there and try to push Natalie by as we see Joe Graff overheating down there on pit road. This will be catastrophic for Joe's efforts here today. He had a great season last year, went to victory lane at Berlin, but did not run this race, actually started the second race of the season, but will be full-time chasing the championship this year. Tough break for another one of our full-time competitors, Joe Graff in that 77 car. All kinds of issues for the Mawa, New Jersey native. Driveline failure, now an overheating problem. Said he didn't want to overextend himself today, just continue to get laps. He and Michael Self, both are finding themselves with problems. Look at Riley Earps trap up, creep up on the back of the 54 of Decker. Joe's gonna have to be back at school Monday. He's a student at NYU. Riding on board with Riley Herbst there. Ooh. Three wide now, hold on. Elani yeah. Munters making her way through that as well. A yeah, close, tough situation there. As Thad Moffat went by the 0-6 of Con Nicolopoulos. Very, very close. I believe it was to Riley Herbst. Now it's a four-car battle out in front. Single cars, Dean, Burton, Eckes, Decker. Herbst in the 18, running alongside of Thad Moffitt. Why 46 for somebody that's in the Petty family? Well, Richard obviously had his number. Kyle had his number. Adam had his number. It's just a progression, he says. He took 46. It's that's next right. in line. Let's check in quickly down the pits with Kim. Yeah, Joe Gaff Jr. had to make another stop. Obviously, that car overheating. Remember, he was part of that incident that started earlier with Michael Self and Willie Mullins. The, the problem was they brought him in. They cleaned off the grill to get all that grass, but that car still overheating. So they're not certain if there's a little more damage that's not caught, allowing clean, cool air to get into the engine, but not looking good for Joe Gaff Jr. Graff trying to... There is a five-car breakaway at the front of the Lucas Oil 200 driven by General Tire. While it's Gus Dean that is in the lead, we are hearing that a window net has fallen on the 46 car of Thad Moffitt. That means he will have to come down to pit lane. Along with Phil Parsons, I'm Dave Reef. Honored now to be joined by Chris Buescher, driver of the JTG Doherty 37 for the Monster Energy Cup. But back in 2012, this ARCA series belonged to you. <laughs> Yeah, we had a great time here. I appreciate you having me back. I uh, get to be here for another ARCA race here at Daytona. Way to uh, way to start off the year. So, you know, it's um, I love this series. I had an absolute blast here. I enjoyed every moment, every racetrack we went to. I had so much fun, learned so much. When he said he enjoyed every moment, do you know he competed in every lap possible? Oh, I know it. Ever ever do that? Incredible. That's incredible. Absolutely. What right now for Thad Moffat, he's already been told that he needs to come to pit road to put that window net up. But right now, he's very, very close to his pit window. These guys can go somewhere between 50 and 55 laps. So every lap that he stays out there, providing we don't get another caution flag, gets him closer to that window. So that may be why they're keeping him on the racetrack. But the ARC officials at some point are going to say, hey, you're going to have to come in now. They're not going to like that. And that's just a huge safety issue. And, and, you know, luckily he's at the back of that group, and it, it is the safest part of that little breakaway. But it's just, it, it's dangerous. And so at some point, they are going to mandate him come in, I would imagine, very shortly. Gustine continues to lead. 2015 making the move to Xfinity. We had a little bit of practice. You guys did run into that abbreviated rainstorm we had earlier today. How's the car so far? You know, I've been pretty happy with it. I feel like we uh, we made some really good improvements from last year. Everybody at JTG Doherty Racing's done a great job. And uh, we have better speed than we've ever had here in the past. And, you know, we're excited for qualifying tomorrow. Hopefully we get, uh, we get some decent weather. It's been uh, kind of hit and miss today, but, you know, we'll, uh, it's dry enough to be racing right now. So that's a good start. I think if I'm if I'm these guys, Thad Moffitt's team, I'm going to fill that up th thing up with gas, put the wind in it, and not worry about tires right now unless he slid the tires coming down pit road because he may be able to stay in the lead lap if he's there quick enough. And he is in his pit stall, so they're going to put that window net up and just try and get him back out there without losing as much time as they or as much time as they can here, trying to minimize the time lost. And a tough break for him as well as he was running here in the early going, but just going to try to uh, get things buttoned back up there on the Thad Moffat machine and send him back out onto the racetrack. He's definitely going to lose a lap. The field goes by him right now. You see the window net is up. Took him a, took him a bit of time to get that net up, but... Uh, now he's going to have to rely on maybe this race going green 
for a little bit or try to be in the free pass position if the caution flag were to come out. Yeah, that is a tough break to be in that, that first breakaway and be running so good. You know, those window nets are just so tight on these speedway cars. They are really difficult to get up. So, uh, you know, that is a tough break and that'll definitely put them in a tough spot. Hopefully they can get that lap back. The benefactor of that, Riley Earps, who's moving to the fifth spot, but there's a little bit of a breakaway when it comes to the top three as Dean Burton and Eckes in the 32, 20, and 15 started to open up a gap a little bit. Some serious racing back here as they lap by some of our slower cars. This is 69 of Scott Melton there. The white car on the inside, there's Brad Smith driving the 48, made famous by James Hilton. He tragically lost James last year. A lot of stories going on back in the pits. Mm -hmm. Remembering a, him fondly. What a great guy and a great driver, too. It was awesome to have around. Getting to hear the stories with him when we were in the garage, just an awesome, awesome competitor, just a really nice guy to be around. That was, that was a tough break. That's what I've enjoyed so much about hanging out with Phil this week. 52 consecutive speed weeks. You believe that? I hear you. And I'm 45 years old, too. That's what's hard now to that's believe. That's the amazing part. <laughs> but we figured out already that I don't know how to do math. So <laughs> he's safe there. Three-car breakaway. Dean Burton and Eckes. 29 of 80 laps down here at the Lucas Oil 200. Of course, Austin Dillon, defending champion. Chris Boucher is joining us in our ARCA booth. No pressure. Used to get eight days to prepare, right? Yeah. Yeah, that's plenty, right? I mean, we've had all off-season, so we're, we're as prepared as we've ever been. And uh, now but that yet, we're here, we're getting everything flowing again. We're ready. And yet you never get everything done. Boy, the pits, the garage area through tech. <laughs> it was wild down here. It, they've been very busy. We went, at, we went away to break, and this gap between third and fourth was about two and a half seconds, and the gap is gone. <laughs> Riley Herbst has caught that group and brought a bunch of others with him. On board with Leilani Munter. What the health on board camera. Trying to fight their way back to the front of this field, and they have done just that. We mentioned the 28 driver, Brandon McReynolds. I look to my right up here in the tower. Larry McReynolds, his dad, is right up there. And for more on the 28, let's go down to Kim. We haven't talked a lot about Brandon McReynolds today. That's because he spent the first portion of the race just laying back, trying to stay out of trouble, but now making moves specifically with Todd Gilliland, one of the other drivers in the race field that he feels comfortable with. McReynolds, though, making his return to the Arkham Menard Series for the first time since 2012. It, it needs to be said, though, a sporty car that he is driving here today, carrying a tribute scheme to the late Davey Allison. Allison, an eight-time Parker Racing Series winner and a 1992 Daytona 500 champion. That picture that you just saw was from Victory Lane when Davey Allison took the checkers that day. Who was his crew chief? None other than Brandon's father, Larry. Now, Larry had a young Brandon McReynolds in his arms in that photo. Brandon only nine months old in that photo, but the connection runs very deep here. Davey Allison is Brandon McReynolds' godfather. So right now you're seeing that sporty throwback scheme for Davey Allison run by Brandon McReynolds. Let's check in though with Dylan Welch to see what he's got. And Kim, from a driver with some laps around this racetrack to somebody with no experience on any super speedway of any kind, that's your second place runner, Harrison Burton, right now. Said he watched a lot of film and leaned on his dad, who was a pretty good super speedway racer in his own right. Jeff Burton, his dad, of course, won here in the Cup Series in July of 2000. I asked Harrison if Jeff was going to be on the radio talking to him and kind of coaching him around the racetrack, and he said, he'll be on the radio if I'm doing something wrong. So far, Jeff hasn't said a word, so Harrison's doing a pretty fine job running that second spot. Harrison with a couple of Arca wins in Toledo as well as Pocono, but getting the job done right now. Making Gus Dean's life a little tense. I think they're right where they want to be right now. With this, at this point in the race, we're close to halfway, which is a good sign. Nobody wanted this race to, to not get in and not be official. See him snaking around a little bit. What can you do? Chris, when you're behind somebody, if, if you're Harrison Burton in that 20 car, what, what can you do to disrupt the air if you want to, if you get late in the race to try to make a move on him? Yeah, right now he's not ready. You know, right now is a good time to be able to feel it out and try and figure out if you can move up the hill, maybe run down it on the corner exit, see if you can get a little run. Uh, try and see 
where he's running. See if he's weaving a little bit of gap to the yellow line on the bottom at certain times. He seems to be holding it pretty tight, which is, you know, the defensive move to, to do here. But, you know, you can start to figure out when your car will get run. Some cars come off the corner and will gap, uh, will lose a little bit, or, you know, some will gain up off the corner. Others will, will really get a run at the end of the straightaway. It's just depending on, on where your car really, really frees up and gets that momentum. So that's what he can be learning right now as he's, He's riding behind him trying to figure out, but it's just not time to go up there and try and, try and mix up that much yet. The best news for him probably is they have a couple teammates behind him and Christian Eckes and Leilani Munter. They could team up on Gus Dean probably if they wanted to right now. And that's the biggest thing. You have to have teammates here. You have to be able to pull out and stay. You have to have people stay with you. You're going to need several cars to pull out to get around that leader. Working now on lap 39, 38 are in the books. We're starting to hear rumblings. The pit window is about to be open. We're getting close to that halfway mark when a race could become official if it rains. We're deep enough now that you've got to start thinking about the last 40 laps. Yeah, I think these teams have been looking at the radar to say, okay, we're going to make it halfway. We know that at least that. And they were probably within about 10 laps of, of having to come to pit road. Some guys may be earlier than others, but I think everyone will have to be in somewhere around lap 50 because of the, the three pace laps. We've had a, had a few caution laps, but most of these guys think they're going to get around six miles a gallon, and that's going to equate to about 50, 50 laps. The top eight breaking away. There's a trio of cars right behind that lead pack. And they include the 28 of McReynolds, the four of Gilliland, who's got the fastest lap of the race so far, and a guy we have yet to talk about, Grant Quinlan, the Ontario native, in that 30 car. They're in a great spot right here. They're only about three and a half seconds behind that lead pack. We know we're going to have pit stops. More than likely, we're going to have some more ca another caution flag, certainly, if not more caution flags. Pit stops are one of the hardest things to do when you're new to speedway racing. Trying to come down as a group, not slide your tires, because I'm, I'm imagining a lot of people aren't going to take tires. I remember we didn't have to, or maybe just have to take two here, enough to, to be able to put gas in at the same time. But trying to get the pit road as a group, your distance here from turn four exit to pit road is a lot shorter than Talladega. A lot of times it's where we'll have trouble in, in races where you don't have any experience doing it. It's very difficult. We, we can wreck on a caution coming to pit road, much less <laughs> trying to go from 190 miles an hour down to pit road speed of 55 miles an hour. That voice you just heard with Phil Parsons and myself is Chris Bush of the 2012 ARCA champion. We are just past the halfway mark now. 100 miles are in the book. Gus Dean has led 26 of the first 40 laps. And he is in control of an eight-car freight train. Everybody wondering, when will they duck down into those pits? Take a look at that blue and white car there. Second from last in line. That's Brett Holmes. We saw him on his side last year in one of those late instances. I was talking to his dad, Stacy. There's a good shot of Brett. Very, very excited. Shane Huffman has come over to that team. Going to be the crew chief for that team. They're very excited about running the full season. Stacy is... His dad was saying that his daughter, Haley, was up in New York auditioning for schools such as the Juilliard School. She's a singer and actress, so uh, a lot of talent in that family. Yeah, no, the no. We got a big wreck off of the Oh, big wreck. Here. That's Eric Caudell. A team that had an unbelievable amount of work getting that two car put together. Eric crossing over 18 states in 10 days. The team had that car in four or five states in the days leading up. And now they've got a damaged race car that they'll put back on a hauler. Was this a situation when he was trying to come to Piro? Did he make contact with another car or maybe just get on the brakes? These guys don't really touch the brake that much, especially if you're running out in front of a pack. You get over here coming off turn four and find out because you haven't had the brakes warmed up that you have an issue. Yeah. It's, this is going to be contact yep, here. There you is what go. That's going to yeah. be. Yeah. I he think just being run over. Too. Yeah. Oh, and that is a heavy, heavy impact. Yeah. No fault of his own, but, you know, just... It's hard to see. You know, you wave off, you try and do everything you can, but people really got to pay attention. It's just hard. I mean, that, that's that's really, that was a hard hit. Best news you can see right here. Hit road. Caudell crawling out under his own power. He is okay. So caution is out here on lap 42, and you can best believe that the pit stop strategy window, it is wide open. We will have all the details when we come back to Daytona. Back in Daytona at the Lucas Oil 200, driven by General Tire with our Richmond Water Heaters mid-race recap. The early leader was Mr. Eckes in a 15 car, settling in nicely. 
But things change right here. A little bit of bump drafting. Willie Mullins, the three, gets in the Michael Self, turns him around. Will send him to the garage for repairs for our defending race winner. The car torn up severely. Then Joe Graff was having his own issues, a car that already went to the back of the starting field due to mechanical issues, and this wasn't the issue. This is just overheating. No, this was under green flag conditions, too, but Thad Moffat was doing a great job, but his window net come down while he was running in the lead draft here. They had to come to pit road under green to put his window net up. He shared the front row. And then just a few moments ago, Eric Caudell got ran into from behind, nowhere to go but into the wall. The wall wins. Caudell, though, able to climb out of that two-car. A-OK. -okay. And that has opened up the pit window. The strategies, well, they're going to start developing new ones now because everyone's coming down pit road. Yeah, and everyone can make it from here. Harrison Burton, you see at the bottom of your screen, the 20 car. He will win this battle off of pit road. Christian Eckes will come out second. Riley Herbst third. And Brett Holmes fourth. What's happening to Gus Dean? He was leading coming in, now being scored in the ninth spot. This one a little deliberate, but you also got a lot of new teams, new crew members, trying to get this thing gelling. I think they had an issue of getting fuel on that car. It looked like that. Definitely Chris. looks like. Had to go grab another can. Big delay there. When we come back, though, under looming skies, past the halfway point, we will be back with concluding of the Lucas Oil Menards Series. Playing at the Lucas Oil 200, driven by General Tire. You know, once again this year, General Tire is continuing to bring fans closer to their favorite drivers with the General Tire driver profile. We know it looks good, we know it sounds good, but we ask the question to the drivers, what smell do you like? The coolest thing to me is like when you come to the Daytona, which I come to still almost every year if I can. When they fire the engines up and they, they roll around pace laps and you smell the fuel and I just love the smell of race day basically. Sneezes smell so good. I don't know why, but when you sneeze, it smells so good. Christmas cookie, candle. I know it's really like weird and probably not masculine at all, but really dig it. Ah, plumeria flowers from Hawaii. Beautiful, delicate white flower with a little bit of yellow in the center, and it just has the most beautiful smell to it. I wore them in my hair when I got married. Like sneeze, I'm, I'm serious. Next time you sneeze, sneeze, and then smell it in. You're like, it just smells like greatness. At certain times of the year, gases will escape out of the salt marsh. So if you've never smelled it, it probably doesn't smell that great, but it reminds me of home. So that's, kind of, that's, that's my favorite smell. We got some feng shui up here in the booth, but what does I a about, sneeze? I don't know about the sneeze. I'm not what does a sneeze that. smell like? I'm out. I have no <laughs> answer for that one. Field continues to form up, but we've got details on the 54 and 4 cars as we check in with Kim. Yeah, the 54 of Natalie Decker, well, they're taking a sigh of relief. Her spotter, Kevin Hamlin, was trying to do some wheeling and dealing up on the spotter stand until it went under caution to figure out who she was going to pit with under green. Lucky for them, they saw that caution. It made it a lot easier on young Natalie Decker. Not a great stop, though, for her DGR Crosley teammate, Todd Gilliland. They did not get the fuel cell full during the first time they came in. Had to bring Todd back around and top him off because Daytona is not a place where you want to be low on fuel. Dylan Welch. Well, and Kim, Gus Dean, who came into the pits as the leader, is looking at a ninth place position on this restart here after that issue with the fueling on his pit stop. So uh, I'll call him on the radio, though. Ty uh, Gus's longtime spotter, Tyler Mon, just telling everybody to stay calm, telling Gus that he can do it, and he has. He started 16th, remember, at the beginning of this race and drove to the lead. So they know they can do it. Gus is confident. The car's fast. It's just up to him now to get it done. And, and one quick note also, Riley Herbst is restarting third in that 18 car. He's got two ventures. Motorsports teammates lined up on the front row in front of him there. Riley's plan, shove that 20 car so he can't play games and let the 15 car get in line. Herbs from 17th now finds himself with this unique look. Good news, Eric Condell's been released from the infield care center. So that takes care of the Piedmont Oklahoma native. Pace car is ready to pull back in. Harrison Burton is in that white car. That's the 20 on the inside. The pole sitter has found his way back to the front row now, occupying the outside of row number one. And on the inside, Tyler Earps hopes to get that big push. And Dylan was just talking about. 
Looks like Eckes was holding back a little bit, trying to give the 20 of Harrison Burton room to get down there. Riley Herbst said, no, none of that. I'm going to push you up beside him. There's room now to come down if he wants Whoa, to. Hold on. Silver car back in the pack, getting a little out of shape. That's Dave Mater the third, the 63 car. Says his car number is his age, a guy that's done it in just about everything you can in stock cars. From Cup to trucks to Xfinity. Yeah, he was a winner back in 1991 in the Arca Racing Series at Michigan. Good shot of Brandon McReynolds, the 28 car, the white car behind the 54, Natalie Decker. They're that lined other, up behind the blue and white Red Holmes, number 23. That other baby that was in that picture, Robbie Allison, Larry McReynolds is his godfather. Davey, of course, Brandon McReynolds' godfather. What a great tribute. Larry Mack just one door down, putting the Daytona 592 with Mr. Allison again with Dale Earnhardt 96. Travis Braden in the Matrix care onboard camera. Of course, Earnhardt winning that 2000, or 1998. Starting to get serious now, isn't it? Yeah, it's it go is. time here. Yeah. yeah, I was kind of thinking when uh, when they didn't have to make green flag Ooh, stops. 22 oh. out of shape. That's Connor Hall out of Hampton, Virginia, who did a good job controlling that car. That right rear. Oh, look at and look at the JJ big time Pack. damage. Yep, that's JJ Pack. Out of Haymarket, Virginia. Also the 29, Derek Lancaster with a lot of damage as well. I wonder if the I wonder if that right rear tire went down on that 22. It I was might watching have been it. What could have caused some of that? What a save! Because he was doing a great job riding along, riding around the top five. Marlo Yachts on board. One of the 13 drivers in the field making their first race here at Daytona in the ARCA division. That 61 car is tore up. Second race here at Daytona back in 2015 had an oil line come off, finished 36. Damage on a 36 car. That's Paul Williamson, his first ARCA race. So North Carolina native has stopped in need of assistance. I wonder if all this was the aftermath after the 22 got out of shape, Connor Hall. You see a slide like that. It's hard for everybody else to stay calm and not run into each other as well. 22 on the inside of the 28. Let's see if we can figure out what happened to the Marlowe Yacht well, machine. I'm, I'm, I'm thinking yeah. that right rear tire. You see the sparks it happened too. quick, yep. I think that right rear tire went down on that car. You see the left rear tire is up. Looks like the right rear yeah. is already down, All isn't the it? The letters are gone. He was already going for a ride at yep. that point. It looks like there's a little damage on the right rear quarter, like he might have gotten into somebody a little bit earlier, or somebody might have gotten into him before that. How about the job Grant Quinlan does in that 30 car uh, to avoid him, as well as Gustine in the 32? Let's see if the aftermath... We see what, oh, they're going to bunch up over there. J.J. Pack moves to the outside and gets turned into the outside wall by Derek Lancaster in the 29. Nice job by Leilani Munter getting out of the way, but they just run out of space right here. J.J. Pack was trying to give him room squeeze the 29 into the outside wall. Never driven a race car, but I assume that is the tendency. Try to get away from that accident as quickly as you can. You gotta miss them first, right? Try and be as aware as you can, but yes, you're trying to get up. You see that slide on the bottom, you know chances are it usually comes back up for a short period of time. So, you know, everybody was being aware. It's just, there was a car on the outside and you know, you run into them and it just hurt several people. I don't really know what happened to, to Paul Williamson. Uh, we didn't really get to see that. Look from all of the onboards, Gustine a moment ago, Leilani Mucha right there. Leilani doing a great job avoiding that incident. That slide, that is unreal to me. I mean, to be able to keep it. And that's 180 straight. some miles an hour, right. Chris. And keep it out of all the other traffic and not not get hit, not overcorrect. That's the hardest thing to do in that situation. He did a great job. He did a great job of keeping the wheels straight making sure it spun down the inside. Now he gets to continue. Now Paul Williamson is climbing out. Brand new general tire on the right front. J.J. Pack. You can really see what it looks like there. Now, Dave, who's going to have to fix that 61 car of J.J. Pack? Probably not J.J. Pack. Who put it together? Him and his wife, right? That's right. A car <laughs> they built in six months. They're expecting a child. His wife's six and a half months pregnant. Probably going to feel the wrath of that. Derek Lancaster, the damage there. We are under caution here at Daytona International Speedway with just 30 laps to go here. 
at the Lucas Oil 200, driven by General Tire. A big-time pileup has brought this race to a temporary stop. Arkham Menard Series and the Lucas Oil 200, driven by General Tire. Well, once again this season, drivers will be racing for the General Tire Super Speedway Challenge. It's a championship within the championship race. We're talking about nine tracks a mile or longer in length. It's its own points fund. Yeah, and then a lot of drivers say, hey, I just want to concentrate on running the super speedways. Riley Herbst is one of those guys that's going to share that ride with Ty Gibbs, so he probably will run all these events, and uh, he's eligible to win that championship within the championship. That's a pretty neat deal. It gives drivers that aren't running full-time something else to chase after, something to, to come and have, get to look forward to and work hard towards. It's, it's a really neat deal. When you were back racing in 2012, competing in every lap, it was a wide open series of events at different size racetracks. What did you favor? What did you like back in those days? Uh, I'm a little partial to short track racing. Uh, I love love the racetracks that, that go to an ARCA series. Uh, the Toledo, Berlin, I had an absolute ball at Berlin. Uh, Salem, Winchester, so many short tracks that uh, so many classic the dirt tracks. tracks, something different, you know? I mean, it's, uh, we had so much fun doing this. There's nowhere else you can go and get the kind of experience you can in the ARCA series. I mean, it's, it's, it's unreal. It really is and provides a great, a great foundation to be able to learn and, and build your skills and be able to, to be ready to go NASCAR racing hopefully one day as well. The 20 of Burton continues to pace this field as we check in now with more on the 23 driver, Brett Holmes. Well, and it's been a great run for these guys so far, and they're holding strong here in this third spot. And they've got a uh, new face on the box, at least for Brett, a familiar face to many fans of stock car racing. That's Shane Huffman who's calling the shots for Brett Holmes today. And Brett said that Shane has turned this program around to a complete 180. He said Brett, when he made his ARCA debut in 2016, he showed speed, said he felt confident behind the wheel of the race car. Last year, that was not the case. Said he felt uh, they had their morale was kind of beaten down. He didn't feel like he was on top of the race car. This year, they unloaded a half second faster than they were at Daytona last year. It showed throughout the course of this race, and Brett says that's all thanks to his crew chief, Shane Huffman. Well, let's see. Todd Gillen just in a second ago after that most recent incident. No damage to that Toyota, but he thought he may have run over something, so they took the opportunity to bring him down, change all four tires, look over that Toyota, make sure everything was okay. Everything is A-OK. -okay. Now, Todd is using this race to hopefully gain experience for his start in the truck series here next weekend, specifically working with his crew or his spotter, Eric Holmes. They want to get a lot of practice on where he needs to position himself on the racetrack, how to maneuver on this super speedway. So a lot of note taking being done by spotter Eric Holmes as well as Todd Gilliland here today. Gillen being scored on 19th spot. You can always learn from any position. Thad Moffitt continues to make his way back toward the front. Yeah, good news for him. He restarted at the, uh, at the tail end of the field here. He took the wave around, and now after that caution flag, he's back up in contention and a potential winner. So now in a great spot, back with the lead lap cars, be able to get a good restart. And we've seen that last restart, how it bunched everybody together, produced some great race, and everybody's going to have a, a, a shot at this. It's going to be pretty wild to the finish, I would imagine. It's be a 27-lap dash. As we are 53 of 80 in the books. We've had three different leaders, five changes, and right now it's Harrison Burton in the 20 car. It's Christian Eckes in the 15 car. The front row to the restart zone and the green flag once again. Similar situation with the teammates on the front row. You see, Christian Eckes is going to allow the 20 of Harrison Burton to get down in front of him. Now they can line up and go. Now Riley Herbst is on the inside He's anxious. behind the 23 of Brett Holmes. I love this kid's personality. It's infectious, and he is absolutely only one gear, high gear. I'm going to the front here. That inside line starting to form up again, but now a little shuffling as they make their way down. A 3,000-foot backstretch here at Daytona. Chris, I've been impressed with the way the outside line has been able to, to hang in with these guys and even sometimes move forward. We saw Harrison Burton get the lead from the outside. Natalie Decker right now is leading that outside line with a 28 of Brandon McReynolds behind him. Yeah, if you can hold on for that initial get-go, you know, the bottom having the shorter distance, it's a little easier to stretch out, but that, bo that top will build momentum and it can come back really strong and, and could be in a really good spot. Paul Williamson has been evaluated and released from the infield care center following that last caution. See that petty blue car right there, number 43. That is a teammate 
to Thad Moffat. That's Sean Core. Sean actually family owns Empire Racing. Sean makes a limited number of starts. Always here at Daytona. He's a former pole sitter here at Daytona. Had a great shot to win this well, race last year. Yeah. Got taken out in the last lap accident, but always competitive when he comes here. Brandon McReynolds giving Natalie Decker a nice shove there on the top side. See Grant Quinlan, the 30. Black car moves up to the rear bumper of the 43 of Sean Core. Travis Braden right here, the Matrix Care Ford on the back bumper of Brandon McReynolds. Braden getting himself in position to make a run here as the lap starting to wind down. It's day turn tonight, so it looked like the sun obviously setting in the west, and it looks like the rain going to stay away. That's good news. Hold on here. Great battle going on here between the 54 and 28 with more Kim. Moves being made by Brandon McReynolds right now, but Natalie Decker's team reminded her to feel confident with Brandon McReynolds behind her. He knows what he's doing, they said, although now McReynolds making the pass over Natalie Decker, but had reminded her that he is a good racer to follow his line if he does indeed pass her, which he has just done. He's racing about every type of car there is. A great play track racer, a former winner in the Arkham Menard Series at Talladega, and almost won this race here back in 2012. So Brandon McReynolds certainly making moves late in the race. Well, Natalie Decker just made a move there to get back in line following Bobby Gerhardt. Now, she was out to lunch for a moment. I think Brandon McReynolds said, hey, I don't think you can move this outside line far enough towards the front here. I'm going to try to make the move, maybe get in front and see if I can move that line. Yeah, you could see they would get a little shove out and then it would stall. It seems like they couldn't stay hooked up enough to be able to make that momentum work. So trying something different, he's going to try and lead the own line. And actually, he's gotten back to the bottom now and see if he can uh, catch that lead, lead draft and then maybe start, start to form something back up again. See Todd Gillen, the four car, moving around the red and white number 52 of Tyler Dipple. It's time now. It's we're in almost 20 laps to go here. It's time to get up in position. It's going to be hard to win this race if you're fighting back there in the third or fourth group in 12-14 spot. But we're about that time, too. We're working together. It gets thrown out the door. You find a dance partner. You try to get to the front the best way you can. This is where it gets wild. We're where in that one for sure. We're three wide here with 22 <laughs> laps to go. That's I'm Moffitt on the outside in the 46. Right behind Todd Gillen. That's a good car to be following. There's Bobby Gerhardt, an eight-time winner here. And the black number five on the inside behind Tyler Dipple. Black and green, Cordy Rohrbaugh now starting to feel the heat from Decker, who's up on his back bumper trying to find a way back around. Natalie's up on the wheel a little bit after he shuffled back. That Leilani Mooster's right behind her. Frustrating thing at Daytona is being so good. And just one thing happened. All of a sudden, you're, you're 10, 12 cars back from where you, where you were. And... You have to start all over, and it's hard to make moves. It's hard to gain those spots right back. Natalie was running fine, running in the out, leading that outside line. Brandon McReynolds said, we're not moving forward fast enough. She did nothing wrong. She was wide open, and ended up getting shuffled back in the middle of the racetrack. It's Burton, it's Eckes, it's Holmes and Herbst on the general tire leaderboard. Will it look that way when we get back to the Lucas Oil 200? Stick around. Find out with us. Inside of the final 45 miles of the Lucas Oil 200, driven by General Tire. As Burton, Eckes, Holmes, and Gus Dean continue to be the top four, but there is a pack behind them that is getting very, very racy. For more on the leader, here's Dylan. Well, and you can see on the grill of Harrison Burton, there is a piece of debris that has attached itself to the grill, and it is raising the temperatures inside that race car. And Harrison is getting concerned about the water temperature, the oil temperature, all of that is rising. And when you're the leader, you're kind of uh, out of options. When you're in second or third, sometimes like those guys behind him, you can suck up on the car in front of you and allow the air to take that debris off. When you're the leader, you don't have that option. So he's going to try and just ride it out here and hope that that debris either clears itself off or the temperatures sort of plateau and he's able to hold on here for these last 17 laps. Billy Venture and Mike Kilman working in tandem. Crew chief in that effort, paying attention to those vital numbers. Yeah, I think if the temperature gets too high, I think he's got to try to figure out a way to get behind his teammate, Christian Eckes, 
because these engines have an ECU, an engine control unit, and if the temperature gets too high, they will start going into a safe mode, and they will actually detune themselves. He certainly doesn't want to get there. No, if that motor starts cutting power, it will be really hard to stay ahead of that group, and you still have to get it off and get the temperature down to gain that power back. So that can definitely create an issue. Uh, never really knew there was a downside to being the leader, but <laughs> but here at the Super Speedways, a lot of times that can be one of those uh, one of those things that doesn't quite work out. The matrix here onboard camera looking up to Riley Herbst in the 18. Sean Corr on the 43 running side by side. Herbst was trying the high side. We thought maybe he'd be better off on the bottom side. Now he's down there trying to get a push from Tyler Dippel in the 52. You can tell we're getting late in the race here with just 16 laps to go. These guys were giving each other a lot of room before. There's a little bit less room and a little bit more taking instead of giving. Yeah, that side draft's getting pretty aggressive yeah. right about now. So yeah, they're starting is. to work that really hard and be able to, to clear the car on the outside so they can try and, try and get up there. They're getting aggressive. This is, this is sure to be wild. This pack trying to catch the first seven cars that have started to drive away from the field. Burton, with those raising temperatures, continues to lead. But how about the job Leilani Munter's done? She's six. Natalie Decker has fought her way back in to the seventh car. That's the green and black machines. Yeah, right now, if they could just be in that lead draft like they are, they have done a great job. They're, they have themselves in position to possibly go for the win in this race. That's what you got. You have to be there first. And to be there at the end of this race, anything can happen in, the, in these races. And to be in that lead group and to be hanging on, on, you couldn't ask for a better spot. And it's a great place to learn at the same time. So what does that backpack Phil have to do to be able to get things sorted out so that they can join the freight train at the front? Well, they need to line up, and that, that's going to be hard to do. You have about, what, about a dozen cars that are fighting position, fighting for position. Cars, yep. So it's hard for them to say, hey, I'm going to have to back off and get behind somebody because you don't want to give those spots up. But I think that's what it's going to take, especially if that front group of seven cars stay in line. Yeah, very competitive race cars right there. And there's no doubt if they lined up, they could catch that next group. But you try and tell those five cars on the outside they have to lift and get yeah. in line. I say those freeze the moment, ask each 11 of them, what do you need to do? And they'll have 11 different answers, <laughs> maybe even more for you. No, you need to do this. No. <laughs> well, they're running out of time to get the job done. We are 14 laps to go. The longer they run side by side, probably the more ground they're going to lose. We'll check it when they get to the start finish line. Right now, Brandon McReynolds leading that group is right at two seconds behind Harrison Burton. That 06 car in the freight train, Con Nicolopoulos, out of Michigan. That's a lap car. He's trying to stay out of the way, and he's done a good job of that. What's going on with the 28, Kim? A lot of talk from spotter Tab Boyd on who Brandon McReynolds should be working with as we move into the closing laps of this race here. It's bounced back and forth between the 18 of Riley Herbst and the 43 of Core. So McReynolds right now trying to make moves, trying to make big moves here as the laps wind down. But they keep reminding him 13 laps to go, 14 laps to go. However many laps to go is still a lot of time at Daytona. We're going to see some big moves from some other drivers as we narrow in in the last five laps. So they told him to remember that and to exercise patience. So right now, Brandon McGriddle is trying to be extra patient as the laps wind down here at the Lucas Oil 200. There are now officially 13 laps to go as that backpack has formed a straight line. Everybody trying to chase down the 20 of Harrison Burton. Can he hold on? Who will win? Who will make the big move? Will we have the big one? Stick around. The Lucas Oil 200 driven by General Tire in a moment. Back with the Arc of Art Series, the Lucas Oil 200, driven by General Tire, where there are 10 laps to go. And from Harrison Burton in the 20 car, back to Natalie Decker, the end of the line in seventh. We're talking about a second. Brandon McReynolds, it's 2.3 oh, seconds back as we've got one turned around. It's Thad Moffitt in the 46. Now, there was another car or two involved in that incident. Looks like Thad's going to get the worst of it. That coming off of turn four, it looks like... Perhaps the 11 was involved. Yeah, Jason White possibly involved in the situation. So a couple of first-time Daytona racers getting together here. It'll change everything now with nine to go. Let's see if we can figure out what happened. 46 run along by himself, gets a little wiggly. 
looks like a tire. Looks like a maybe a right rear tire. At least maybe it smells like a tire, right? <laughs> Without <laughs> a general tire right, profile. Right rear tire was down on that car, and the 11 of Jason White came along with nowhere to go, ran into the outside wall trying to avoid him. But another right rear tire issue here for Thad Moffitt. Just a long for the ride at that point. Yeah. Did a really good job saving as long as he did. And there was Jason just trying to keep from running into Thad and ran into the outside wall, but. What a tough break for Thad Moffat, who did a nice job. Reaction from back in the pits. So Thad Moffat will not do what Uncle Adam did, winning his first ARCA race, something that Lee Petty did, winning the first Daytona, or excuse me, yes, Lee Petty, the first Daytona 500. Yeah. But you can tell this kid's gonna be a racer. Yeah, great effort, though, by Thad Moffat and that entire Empire Motorsports team. I'm sure he's really disappointed, but uh, I think he uh, he did well for himself here. The goal was four fenders on the car, top ten or better. He was perilously close. Fortunately, when you have something like that happen, you know, you, you take the good out of the day, and you take what you were able to do. You know, really, that's two things that have happened to him in this race that, that are very uncharacteristic. It's with the window net coming down earlier on it and being back in the position they were in, it, it really should have had a, a better day, and it's just small things keep going on. You know the lineage of Thad Moffat. This is Jason White, the Sun Peaks Br British Columbia native, who is a speed skier for the Canadian national team back in the day. Said it took his race car 15 years to go faster than he went <laughs> on skis. Now he's just going to try to get back out and join the Arca Menards field here as we are under caution with eight to go in Daytona. Seven laps to go at the Lucas Oil 200, driven by General Tires. The Monster 18 of Riley Herbst pulls off of Pitt Road, a team that dove underneath the hood of that Toyota. The Joe Gibbs racer, not sure what happened there, but the big concern is Harrison Burton and, and what is stuck, Dylan, to the grill of his car. Yeah, and we'll ask uh, the man calling the shots for him. That's Mike Herman Jr., Mike Hillman Jr. Um, the debris on the grill, is that a concern right now? No, we took enough tape off the grill to run back in the draft. You know, if we get back to second or third, it might be an issue. But out front, I think we're plenty good. We're not worried about it one bit. Do you guys feel like you are good enough to hold on? I think so. You know, it's it's Daytona. You know, these guys at Venturini Motorsports did a great job, built a really fast X Imaging Toyota. We'll see what the end brings. Is there any plan with the 15 at all? Nah, I think there's always a plan until two to go, but we can make all the plans we want, except to them kids out there. And his kid is Harrison Burton, who's leading right now, so we'll see if he can hold on for six more laps. 18-year-old in front, 18-year-old right behind him, and only six laps to go. What we'll give, find out with us. We'll be back with green flag coverage for the Lucas Oil 200, driven by General Tire. Get him up. With Dylan Welch and Kim Coon in the pits. Phil Parsons, 2012 Arca champ, Chris Busher up at the booth. I'm Dave Reef. Welcome back to the thrilling conclusion. Five laps to go here at the Lucas Oil 200, driven by General Tire. We started the day talking about 18-year-olds on the front row. We still have a pair of 18-year-olds at the front of this restart. And those are 18-year-old teammates that have been working really well together here. We saw Christian Eckes on our last restart leading a loud 20 of Harrison Burton to get down in front of him. We're going to restart with four laps to go. If I'm Harrison Burton, I'm the control car. I don't want Christian X in front of me. <laughs> no, I believe they go. And really, at this point, it may not be up to them. It may be the 32 and the 23 behind them that aren't going to let either one of them give the other a little bit of room. Yeah, the guys in the second row may dictate who is going to jump out front here on this restart. Promise they're going to push. Two Toyotas on the front. Two Chevrolets. Back in row number two as Gus Dean has fought his way back to the fourth spot. When we go by this time, four laps to go. All deals better be made now. All strategy better been thought about. I think, throw strategy out the window. I think the deals are out the window. <laughs> it is go time. That. <laughs> Great job by Harrison Burton getting enough of a jump to get in front of Eckes. Well, look at him all the way three, four wide. About Brandon McReynolds all the way at the top of the racetrack. He's got the four of Todd Gillen going to join him up there. How about three wide off of turn two down the backstretch. 
Burton getting a good start there, as you mentioned. Getting it wound up now. He's got Eckes still taped to his bumper. Gustine has now moved into third and 32. It looks like McReynolds and Gillen don't have enough help to run with that inside line. Hard to get that momentum built up as quick as quick as they need it to be able to go up there and fight for that lead right now. Kim Burton watching on. Definitely feeling the emotions here. Three laps to go. I wonder when Christian Eckes is going to try to make the move. He's going to have to have some help by Brett Holmes. That's who I would be talking to right now, unless Christian Eckes racing for the championship is just satisfied to finish second here. I don't think that 18-year-old is going to be satisfied. No to one's ever second. satisfied with finishing second, but when it comes down to it, you've got to have the right situation to make the right move, and if you can't, you may have to may have to consider that that big picture in the championship at the end of the season. Here Gillen comes the 28 the on the 28. outside. Yep. Remember, we're not supposed to lock bunk bumpers here in the ARCA Racing Series. Word from ARCA officials telling them to split up now. They did, briefly. So hard to call that because all you have to do is give an inch and hit him again and give an inch. You can keep bumping, you just can't lock you can't on. can't stay hooked up. They've done Reynolds to fourth. They're pushing the envelope there, though. They are driving those things, too. They are out of shape. They are making headway. This is going to get interesting. Inside of oh. two to go. Hold on. Here we go. Another, situ another situation where the pushing went wrong. They were being so aggressive, and it was working. It really was. It's just such a fine line. And with these cars, when the bumpers don't match up perfect, they, they lift. And as soon as it lifts up and you don't give them time to correct it, you really, you just run into bad situation, and that's unfortunate. They were, they were coming, man. They, they were sure coming were. in a big time way, but stopped on the back stretch. Brandon McReynolds in the 28, Gustine in the 32, Leilani Munter. Does she have a little bit of damage there in that 55 car? What the health driver hanging it up at the end of this one? During 18 race ARCA career, she dabbled in other motorsports as well. See Brandon with the winning net down. You can see him moving around inside the car. Look at the helmet. With his Godfather Davy Allison taped all over it. It's a tough break. But what is that moment like, though, in the car? You're coming, you know you're in this thing, you are amped up, and suddenly the dream is over. That hurts. Yeah. I promise that one hurts right there. But you know, to to never really be at the front of the front of the pack the whole race, you know, had a little bit of strategy, stay out of trouble early on, and come when it right time, and they were doing it. And it just didn't quite work out. I mean, it's it's all you can do to go up there and push, and that's that's how you have to do it. And they were they were making moves that we haven't seen anybody make all race long, and just you know one wrong move at the just barely the wrong time, and it, and it just creates a ride like that. Remember, Brandon had heartbreak here once before. Oh, he that's was leading right. this race coming off turn four in 2012. Oh, yep. I mean, between turn four and the and the trioval, he was leading the race, ran out of fuel and didn't get the win. He won later that year at Talladega, but going to be another heartbreak for Brandon right here. Good news for Brandon as he gets to race again tomorrow night at New Smyrna in the K&N East Series. Let's see what came first. Well, a lot of things happening at just the exact bumping, right time. Just yep. bumping. Todd Gillen's trying to help Brandon McReynolds. He wasn't trying to turn him around. He was trying to help him. And unfortunately, Brett Holmes, who did an outstanding job running in the third position all day long, and he ends up getting taken out as well. There's what we're talking about. Getting close. I'm not saying locking bumpers, but I'm saying and a little shoving you going can see on. It, you can see a gap just a little bit and come back and get that impact. Well, it's also hard because when you do that, it also creates that moment where it lifts the back tires off the ground a little bit. But. Gillen unable to get through this, by the way, now being scored in the third spot. Yeah, Natalie Decker also, Grant Quinlan getting by. Sean Core. Hard contact there between the 32 of Gus Dean and the 28 of Brandon. See the 32 on the outside. He might have got a little bit of a I bump believe. as well. And then he made contact with the 28. He had already gotten to the outside wall after a little bit of contact as they were trying to avoid that incident. Gustine carrying our general tire on board. You ride along with him. 
That's the driver's view, though, right there. You were sitting in the back of a spoiler. You have no clue anything's going on until you hear it on the radio. By the time they can communicate that and tell you you need to be checking up, a lot of times it is too late. You're already wrecking or you're already running in the back of somebody. So, yeah, not much different you can do in those situations. On board the What the Hell on board camera, Leilani Gunter. She sees the smoke. Did an excellent. Excellent job getting through it. I think she might have had a little bit of contact. Looked like the 52 of Tyler Dipple was the closest car to her. They made a little, they made a little bit of contact after they got through the incident. I believe it might have cut a tire down. It sounded like she had a tire hitting the crush panels in there as well. Yeah. Might have been why she did lose it at the very end. So we are now scoring three laps to go, and the drama just continues to go. Red line on the tag. Who will win the Lucas Oil 200? Can Burton hold on, or will the other 18-year-old steal the thunder, or will somebody else win today in Daytona? Welcome to Overtime with the Arkham Menard Series. The restrictor play race today, it's the Lucas Oil 200, driven by General Tire. A big change from what we saw one year ago. Yeah, they only had one attempt at a one-lap shootout. They're going to get the green and the white flag together. Then the next flag will end this race. If the caution were to come out, that would end the race. They would freeze the field. Or if they go on to the checkered flag, that will end the race. I think a great move by the Arca Series. We tore up a lot of cars last year, trying to get, they had multiple overtime finishes. That for Daytona Talladega, that's the way it's going to be. Just one attempt at a one-lap shootout. I think it's excellent. It's a great, it's a great rule. Saves race cars. You know, it saves the, <laughs> saves the opportunity for for people to go out there and have something bad happen. Uh, one one attempt. You know, one attempt. Make it or break it. And if they end up in, in an accident, that'll be it. They'll freeze the field and. You know, you'll, uh, you'll be able to go to victory lane for the for the guy out front at that time. And they also want to make sure that if you have your strategy and you're, you're close on fuel, that you don't extend this 10 to 15 laps with multiple attempts at, at, a, at an overtime That's finish. That's a really good point. You don't think about that stuff. But, man, if you run out just because you're under caution, that, that can be as frustrating as anything. And you're looking at the four car of Todd Gilliland. Got through the incident, positioned perfectly. Now restart. He will be third with his crew chief. Here's Kim. Chris Lawson is the one that caused the shots for Todd Gilliland. He'll line up behind leader Harrison Burton. What are you telling your young driver? Mostly just uh, keep his composure. You know, it's uh, a lot going on right here. A lot can happen in one lap or even one corner. So he's been doing an awesome job. I really hate that him and McReynolds couldn't stay hooked up right there. I hate that happening to 28. But, uh, no, I think we got a fast race car and an even better driver. So looking forward to this. Fast race car. What has he been telling you in terms of feedback on the car throughout the race? Uh, he said it's uh, incredible the whole race. He said it's uh, about one of the coolest things he's ever drove. So I think he's having more fun than we are watching it. So good luck. Thank you. That's Chris Lawson, crew chief for Todd Gillen. Again, Todd looking to win here at his first start at the World Center of Racing. Well, we are about to find out. It may not be fun if you're inside. Well, it's fun if you're in the cockpit of that car. Absolutely. Oh, you're racing for a win at Daytona, <laughs> but it's even better for all of you watching on FS1 for those of us here at Daytona today. That's David Gilliland, his dad, the team owner. He's got to be nervous. We saw Harrison's mom on the box. She's nervous. We're pacing like Cheshire Cats. We can't wait to see what's going to happen. Remember, here. they're teammates now, Harrison Burton and Todd Gillen in the truck series for KBM for Kyle Busch Motorsports. They're not teammates in this not race, now. but they might be trying to work together here to try to get Harrison Burton out front. And then maybe Todd said, maybe I can do something with him, but we have to clear Christian Eckes first. Yeah, just that small detail. There's a car in the way. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> How about the job Natalie Decker's doing, though, right now, restarting fourth? Remember, she's, she is Todd Gillen's teammate in this race here for, for DGR Crosby. Yeah, she's in a great Crosby. spot as well. This can really, really put her in a spot to where she can take advantage. If anything happens here, you know, you get through it, you'll be, you'll be set up. Yellow's come back on. We're going to give him one more time around as the field works its way off of turn two. Got a couple safety cars over going into turn number three, checking the racetrack. Want to make sure the racetrack is clean for these guys and girls see a lot of grass on the grills of all the race cars and I don't think it was cars that went through the grass or, or were behind the accident I think there might have just been a lot of grass on the racetrack and knows that a lot of people have debris and, and could be something that um, through these caution laps could get the cars a little hot and might put some into them into that wimp mode you were talking about earlier for the for the restart Chris, I was looking at the 20 of Harrison Burton I believe that tear off has gone off that it's grill gone, so yep. replaced by grass yeah. Oh, issues for Dave Mater the third in the 63 looks like a right front tire down on that car against ran through some of the debris 
from that accident probably probably before the guys had a chance to clean the racetrack drivers involved in the incident Brandon McReynolds as well as Gustine have been cleared from the infield care center Paul Williamson that was involved earlier in a yellow flag has also been cleared Dylan well, and talking about the strategy of where you want to line up on this restart, for Christian Eckes, they were actually okay with Harrison Burton picking the inside lane so that he lined up in front of Todd Gilliland. This 15 bunch, they weren't so keen on the idea of having Gilliland behind them. They were afraid, as well as he has been pushing, that they were just going to push him right out of the way. So Eckes is okay with lining up in front of Natalie Decker, but Crew Chief Kevin Reed there, you saw, just stressing to Christian that they want to just race the 20, but bring the car home in one piece. They're another one that's racing for the championship at the end of the year. So they want to just conserve as much as they can, but go for the win, too. That's a man that wears his emotions on his sleeve. That's Billy really. Vicerini right there, <laughs> feeling the effects as well. Yeah, the car owner along with his parents here. <laughs> He's in a great spot. That's all he can do. He can bring fast race cars to the racetrack, and they've got two of them right now in contention to win. So again, we are officially in overtime rules here with the Menards Arca Series. Once that green flag comes out, it will do so with a white flag. The next flag that comes out will signify the end of the race. If it happens two and a half miles later, it'll be a checkered flag. But if it's a yellow flag, that will mark the end of the race. Let's go for a checkered flag. I like that idea much, much better. Well, it's the 18-year-olds, Harrison Burton, along with Mr. Eckes outside of him in the 15, the pole sitter. Got Todd Gilliland craftily getting his way through a yellow flag situation. And then Natalie Decker, so much talent over there at the GGR Crosley team. But a former sprint car guy helping to call the shots, and Frankie Kerr. Sprint car action going on out of Volusia County right now. How about 18-year-olds uh, running one, two, three right now? You know what, their combined ages, wow. Unbelievable. This don't, don't do the math on that, nope. Dave. <laughs> nope. Please. They're making me feel old. <laughs> <laughs> Sean Corr is sitting in the number six spot right now. He's going to have an opportunity to win. The next time by, they will see the green and white together. Overtime will decide the final lap here of the Lucas Oil 200 driven by General Tire. And as it comes out, it does so with Harrison Burton getting a nice jump. Look at the side drafting by Christian Eckes. How about that push by Todd Gilwin, the black car pushing Harrison Burton. The inside road definitely driving away from the field. But there's still over two miles to settle this one. What a great job by Todd Gillen. But are they too far out there, Chris? You know, They're going to have some momentum when they get there. The top line looks to be making some headway. into turn three two corners and a trial to go to see if an 18 year old can win a 200 mile race Gilliland looks outside he has Eckes lined up behind him and it's going to be a drag race to the finish line and it will be the 18 year old picking up his third ever arc of win but none bigger than the Daytona 200 Driven by General Tire, pushed by his mother. How about that Lucas Oil 200 winner getting the job done? <laughs> he doesn't want to back off. I'm, I'm <laughs> probably Never making sure that yet. was exactly. the checkered flag. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. What a great job, though, by his teammate in the truck series, Todd Gillen, giving him that push on that restart. That's what made it. They got the, the good jump. They hooked together, pushed him outside of the 15 car, and Basically, they had it to themselves all the way to the start finish line. You saw the emotion of a mother, Kim, nervous energy now. I guarantee you there's going to be some tears flowing around. Billy has a little bit different look on his face than he, <laughs> he did. He does as well. <laughs> yeah. Three minutes ago, doesn't he? <laughs> I think everybody now can take that big breath in. Okay. <laughs> we just witnessed a little history here. His dad picked up a win here at Daytona during the summer months. And now his 18-year-old son with a window net down comes by the start-finish line and knows he has won the Lucas Oil 200 driven by General Tire. And normally you don't want your 18-year-old to have too much fun with the car. 
Do you think he'll, this might be an will give him an exception to the rule here? I would, I would here? say this might be. Burton holds on, and that is one proud mom, Kim, as we'll head down to Victory Lane at Daytona International Speedway when we come back to the Lucas Oil 200. It is time for some celebration as the Arkham and Art Series Lucas Oil 200, driven by General Tire, has been won by 18-year-old Harrison Burton out of Huntersville, North Carolina. Dave Reef along with Phil Parsons in the booth. Chris, you're only going to hang out for a little while, but you got so engaged in this race, you hung out with it. It's a good race. I was, I was happy to be here. I appreciate y'all letting me stay around a little bit longer. Take a look at that helmet. Yeah, a little throwback. A little for throwback. Jeffs. Yep. Classy kid. Kid gave the, the kid a flag. <laughs> I guess you could say that, right? Well, let's get down to Kim right now as the celebration continues here in Daytona. Thanks, guys. Todd Gillen's going to have to settle for second place just short of the win. You lined up, though, behind Harrison Burton. What more did you need in the closing laps? I don't know. I thought I had him there. Um, you know, always being the pusher, and I knew we could, I thought we could clear the outside lane. Um, and then I, I thought I could stay more hooked up to him, but I just couldn't. I was wide open the whole time. But um, just an amazing race car. Uh, got to thank Frontline Enterprises, Toyota, everyone at DGR, Crosley Racing. Um, that thing was incredible, like I said. Uh, just to, I could go anywhere I wanted and help the whole lane. So nothing else you could do. Um, that's what we wanted, and I learned a lot. So happy for my teammate there, Harrison Burton, on the truck side. Wish we could have beat him. You know, a lot of guys can race at Daytona, but very few win here. So uh, hopefully we're racing here for a lot longer and, and pick up multiple wins. But uh, still learned a lot. Wish we could have gone. Uh, wish we could have won them. Guys, a great job by Young and Todd Gilliland. He'll come in second here at Daytona International Speedway. Gave the classic answer when I asked what's the plan. He says win came up one spot short. How does that feel <laughs> as you take a look at the <laughs> Lucas Oil 200 unofficial results at the bottom of your screen? He did a great job. You know, from start to finish, he had an excellent race. He put himself in position there. Then you heard him. He thought he had him where he wanted him, and it just didn't work out. You know, it's... It's hard to run around and be in the field. There's more draft, but once you get up to that front and that fresh air, just not able to make that move he thought he was going to be able to on Harrison Burton. So, you know, Burton able to get that that first win here at uh, at Daytona. What an awesome uh, what an awesome feeling. Let's go back down to Kim. Here with Christian Eckes, who will be fourth place finisher at Daytona, though lined up alongside Harrison Burton. Walk us through those last few laps. What more did you need from the car or the drivers who were pushing you? Yeah, I mean, we just needed a little bit of a better push there at the end. Uh, it's a little unfortunate, you know. I thought we had a better car than Harrison, but you know, that's just how speedway racing is. And uh, you know, I can't thank these guys enough. They they worked their tails off on this thing, and we you know we got really uh, got really good from the test. And uh, yeah, I mean. As far as championship-wise, it's good. Uh, you know, we got some bonus points with the pole and leading the lap, and fourth place is uh, still respectable. But, you know, obviously we wanted to win there, but uh, just needed a little bit more. Despite not winning, still a great finish for Christian Eckes and this team, in which will be a championship run throughout the Arkham Menard season. Christian coming out of Middletown, New York. Anytime you can work in bandoleros in, that's what he started in, was <laughs> in the bandolero category. You definitely have to work that in. The 20 car begins to make its way toward victory lane. We hope to hear from Harrison Burton very quickly. Our next telecast here for the Arkham Menard series on FS1 will be the General Tire 200. All that action coming in a third race of the season out in Talladega at the Super Speedway. You can catch the coverage Friday, April 26th at 6 p.m. Eastern here on FS1. Well, if there's one place that you want to be at Daytona International Speedway, it is Victory Lane. And the 18-year-old Harrison Burton has made it there, as has Dylan Welch. And what a drive it was for Harrison Burton making his Super Speedway debut. And Mom Kim leaning in. Dad Jeff is down here as well. We talked about Jeff's success here. And the helmet coming off for Harrison as he gets ready to celebrate his first win at the World Center of Racing. And here he comes. Harrison Burton, a winner at Daytona. And the congratulations from all the crew and Big Bill.
coming in as well to offer his congratulations. You ready? You ready? And the traditional kiss as well. And Harrison, as a super speedway rookie, and a hug for mom Kim as well. As a super speedway rookie, Harrison. As a super speedway rookie, what's going through your head on that last restart? You know you've got Gil in behind you who's been pushing like crazy to get to the front. Uh, that made me feel good, really. I knew that I wanted Gil in behind me. He's uh, he's my teammate in the trucks, and uh, we, work, we work good together. So that was good. <laughs> good to have him. We work good with my teammate Christian Eckes all day. And uh, I, I lost my voice. I was screaming and yelling for a long time so that's so cool man i i don't i don't even know where that ranks in my life it's just crazy i can't even uh put into words how much how much the people that helped me have have done you know dex imaging has been with me since i was 12 years old racing late models and uh now we put him in victory lane in daytona that's pretty cool and uh toyota safe white auto glass and uh more in buildings than the rest of them, Venturini Motorsports. And why did it take you so long to drive for Venturini? <laughs> yeah, I don't know why. <laughs> yeah, so, uh, man, I'm pumped. This is cool. I'm ready to get more of this. Well, the wait was worth it to join Venturini. Harrison Burton, a winner at Daytona. Wearing a helmet in tribute to his father, Jeff. Mom, very happy as well, Kim. All he said he'd wanted to do here was learn for trucks. Well, he learned his way to Victory Lane at Daytona International Speedway, and for that, we congratulate him. On behalf of Phil Parsons, the 2012 ARCA champ, Chris Busher, best of luck preparing for the 500. Dylan Welch, Kim Coon, and our entire crew, I am Dave Reef. NHRA qualifying for Pomona, California, coming up at the top of the hour. Up next, though, it's NASCAR Race Classic 1997 Daytona. Harrison Burton, 18 years of age, is a winner in ARCA Menard Series racing at Daytona.